Mr. Baez. Hi, Maria. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm coming on, on behalf of my cancer research team, and I'm very interested to see what you have to talk about with PILA today. Okay, let's get started. Let's do this. Hello, Mr. Baez. Today I'm going to present to you what HILA cells are. So HILA cells were first encountered in Henrietta Lacks. She was an African-American farmer and she was diagnosed with intraepithelial carcinoma in the 1950s. Her cells are considered immortal, but they're not actually immortal in the sense that they die, but in the sense, in the sense that they replicate indefinitely. This is how they were first described as like, they were described as gelatin-like structures. Okay. Prior to HeLa cells, uh, rhesus monkey cells, they were analyzed and they were utilized to do research for the cure of polio. And it, that didn't work because um, monkey cells, they, they would die once already extracted from the organism. They are not able to grow indefinitely in uh, media or petri dish. So HeLa cells are able to do this. So that's why we use them and it worked. So throughout the years since World War I, the cases for polio, they would increase and decrease out of nowhere uh, inconsistently. And then in the 1950s, when the HeLa cell was first encountered, then it was utilized to create the first polio vaccine in, the 1950, in 1955 and it would eradicate and completely decrease all the cases in order to make it almost zero cases. Since the polio vaccine, HeLa cells have been used for numerous advantages for biology and numerous medi medicinal research. So like the polio vaccine, uh, biology science has created the discovery of genetic links to Down syndrome, a stain called hematoxylin making chromosomes visible, gene therapy, stem cell isolation, cloning, cryogenetics, um, toxins, the development of cancer drug receptin, blood type identification, and many other ones. And these are some of my references. I hope you like this presentation. I did, thank you. Welcome. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez, how were HeLa cells discovered and what makes Ms. Lack so important? HeLa cells were first discovered in Henrietta Lacks. She was first diagnosed with an intraepithelial carcinoma. These cells are very important for research because they are a safe environment for our uh, biological research and medical research. These cells are have they have an authenticity and essence in the way that they contain 76 to 90 chromosomes, which is huge, um, and they are also they are they have present uh, 20 clonally abnormal chromosomes. Okay. Um, and this is acknowledged in the way that they also contain receptors for the human papilloma virus. And most especially um, the strain 18. I don't understand how HeLa cells can both be immortal and not moral at the same time. Could you explain this difference to me? They are not immortal, but we refer to them as immortal because they divide indefinitely uh, in like any media that we use for them, but they do die. They just, they are able to be worked with since they divide so often. Okay, I, I understand now, but how is this important for my company? What, what is your company trying to do? Uh, we pursue novel treatments of cancer and uh, uh, develop new cancer drugs based off of that. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, well, I can assure you the HeLa cells are very, um, they would be a confident way to go about for your research because since they, don't, they do die, um, but they rep replicate indefinitely, then you are able to have it as a backup, uh, as a safe 
safety for your research to not fail and continue doing progress on different advances to cure cancer. That'd be very nice. Back to Ms. Lax for a moment. What ramifications would my company have to consider before we work with her cell line? Um, I do not think so because in, for example, virology laboratories at my university, we, we use HeLa cells and I don't think we need uh, actual consent to use them. So I think your company would be safe. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.